hello this is Shelly Marie and welcome to my YouTube page Mwah. I have been MIA for a while so many things have happened prom getting ready for graduation uh, so many things have happened but I also have been praying a lot um, I have been trying to identify me and I have found my true calling. Um, in the midst of it all, I have found that I love working with young people. This is not for a get rich. This is not for um, to get famous. This is just me. Um, something I wish I had when I was younger. I wish somebody had taught me about a checkbook or taught me about credit. Um, I have three wonderful children. They're not perfect. Um, I wish we still had that whoop ass syndrome to where we can just whoop that ass, whoop that ass, whoop that ass, and not go to jail for it. But in this generation and time, you can't. Um, we have so many young, beautiful um, people because I want to keep it for both sides. But I, I'm, and I'm going to say it like this, we have so many black or African American young people who are killing themselves or hanging themselves because um, they're being bullied, they're being picked on because of the way they look. Um, and I don't agree with that. And I think if they had something to say, hey, you have somebody to talk to. You are beautiful. You are. And I'm sure the parents are doing their best. I'm not knocking the parents at all. I'm sure you know. But sometimes kids don't like talking just to the parent. And I, I found that. Um... To give you an example, um, I had a group of kids that I was talking to. It was five, um, five kids, and I'm not going to disclose their race, but, and it was male and female. And the females, 15, and they were giving head jobs literally every day. They were smoking, they were giving head jobs, and it was for popularity. It was for them to be liked. And these were smart girls. It was like, and I would meet with them like once a week, and it was just like, you know, they would call me in the middle of the night. Let me, I can't, what, I have to tell you what she's doing. I have to tell you. And, I, I, and of course I would go and I would meet with them and it was just it was amazing um, so many young people are afraid to talk to their parents about sex or some of the parents will say oh I'm not ready to have that conversation with them but they're having that conversation anyway without you and I would rather the parents to have that conversation or or even if I had the conversation. I wish I had the conversation with my parents at that time. Um, so this is for you. For you guys. This is for to help those single parents who don't know how to have those conversations. This is for you young people who are looking for an answer. And I don't want you to get it from your friends. Excuse me. I don't want you to get it from your friends. I want you to be able to ask. This is like keeping it real conversations. This is, you know, I want to know, um, for example, um, mm, what's the best one I've had? I can't even think. Um, how do I get him to like me without having to give him a BJ all the time? Or, or... You know, I'm I'm dark skinned and I can't fit in, or or just 
stuff. You know, I found my daughter doing such and such, such and such. And I'm going to have my daughter chime in, you know, periodically as well. Because these are questions. Again, my kids were not perfect. Uh, not by a long shot. And it was conversations that we had that, Lord, I'm surprised I still have hair. I'm surprised I still have eyebrows. But I had to have them. And it was because I didn't have them. And so, I mean, a lot of the conversations blew my mind. I wasn't ready for them. I wasn't ready for them. Like my daughter, the baby, she's like, Mom, do you notice anything different? No, girl, I don't see nothing. Ow. Mm -mm. But I might have to have that conversation. So she came to me and she said, Mom, why, why does one side look bigger than the other? Even though she doesn't have anything, she's paying attention to her body, which is good. But I'd rather her come to me and ask me, why does the sides look different than her going to one of her little friends and asking? Or asking why they why are they taking this pill or why are they doing this? Why it may not make sense to you now or it may not it it just I know it's a lot and it may sound crazy and it may sound like a lot of talking, but this is this is the talk that we have to have. And 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 in most of them are just, you know, we have the round table and we have this and that. These kids don't want to hear no bougie ass. I'm sorry. Did I say that out loud? Yes, I did. They don't want to have these psychologists. And, and I'm not knocking them. But they don't want to have these conversations that are uncomfortable. They want somebody to be able to... Hmm, be able to relate and for the most part I think I'm relatable from what I'm told I'm relatable from what I hear when I meet a lot of people they'll ask me where have you been why <laughs> they tell my daughter all the time that she's lucky and I don't know about Lucky because her and my son went through holy hell as they grew up because they had to learn life lessons. You know, during the summers, they didn't have regular summers. They actually had to do book reports during the summer. Um, but my daughter's an honor roll student. Um, my son, he's military. Why would you send your son to the military? Um, let's see. There are people dying here uh, on the street for no reason. My son is stationed overseas, living his best life. Um, going to the clubs, wearing regular clothes, um, getting a paycheck on the 1st and the 15th. He's not hustling. Um, yeah. That's why he's in the military. Um, he is on his second vehicle. Not saying he's better than anybody else. It's just that we talk. Me and my kids have a very open relationship. Um, some say you shouldn't be your kid's best friend. But I would rather have a conversation with my daughter and know her feelings. And I know they say kids don't have no feelings. <sighs> Young people, you have feelings. And I know your mama probably sitting there saying, don't listen to her. You ain't got no damn feelings in my house. Uh, mom. Uh. So would you rather her go and talk to Bianca and find and, and tell her her feelings? Or would you rather her come and tell you? Would you rather her to discuss when she's ready to have sex with Bianca? Or would you rather her come and talk to you? See, I, I, I'm, I'm going to point these fingers. One to me and four to all of y'all. Because it's our fault. We have lost 
our generation. We, us, we lost our generation. Somewhere in between, we lost our generation. I know they say, ah, this doggone generation, I just don't know where they come from. It's us. We stopped talking, we stopped communicating, we stopped allowing them to speak. We, we just, we stopped. You know, we, we, we stopped. It's, it's not all about beating. Yes, we did. We should beat our kids if, if all deemed necessary. Yes, but instead of making them appreciate us and be open with us and talking to us, we made them hate us and 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 dis- want to disclose stuff. And we just we did stuff. We we created a freaking movie. We're we're basically in a movie. And how do we correct this behavior? We got to correct it some kind of way. And it starts now. It starts with allowing them to ask that first question and you listening. So one of the things that we have, we have amnesty night. And what amnesty night is... It's a day where we come together. Sometimes the kids are called amnesty. Sometimes we'll call amnesty. And and we come in a circle. And we ask each other, do you have anything that you need to clear up? Anything you want to get off of your chest? Anything that we need to know? And, and with amnesty, it stays right there. It's It's there. We talk about it. Yeah, it might just tick you off. It might piss you. Boy, you you want to run through the house and just scream. <laughs> mm. Woo. But it's out. No secrets. We discuss it. And it's there. It's done. Now we know. Amnesty is a wonderful thing. Um, we share our feelings. I remember I told my sons, we, me, my son, and his ex-wife, we had an amnesty, and she was so. Ugh. And so when it came to my turn, and, and I mean amnesty, say how you feel. You say you say what you feel, and you get it off your chest. And my first words to her: I don't like you. I never liked you, and I'm not. I'm, I just don't like you. And and that may have come off harsh, but it's the way I felt. And once we talked through it, I told her why. We were able to discuss. We were able to break bread, and we were done with it. And it was never talked about anymore. It was off my chest, it was off her chest, and it was done. It starts now, you guys. If we want to save this generation, we have too many of our boys that are getting killed because they know not. They don't have anybody to talk to, to man up. They, They have questions. Instead of somebody gearing them to college or gearing them or telling them what what benefits does the military, they want to shoot somebody. We have a lot of people that we that's overseas that need, probably need to be gunned down. And they're getting paid for it. How much are they getting paid for out here? You know how many people, how many of our people are in jail? In our prison system. Do you know how many of our kids. Are in foster care. How many of our people are dying from drug overdose. Our children. Let alone. Because. Our children started off five. Mom can I ask you a question girl. Go sit down because I'm, I'm looking at TV. 10 years old. Mama, can I ask you a question? Girl, go sit down. I'm on the phone. Go sit your ass. I I kid you not. I was in Walmart. 
And this little girl asked her mama for this this new um, box thing. It, it was a toy this past holiday. And, and I felt so bad I wanted to buy it for her, but she had three kids and her old man with her. And I, I don't know what this new toy was, but it's, it's a box that um, you open it and you don't know what's in it. And some of you may know what it is, but it's $75. And so the little girl said, Mama, that's what I want for Christmas. That's what I want. Now, the first thing is, I know many of you may not believe in Santa. And you probably have taken that belief away from your kids. And everybody has their, their right. I, I wanted mine to stay young for as long as she could. She knows God, Jesus was born on that day. She knows everything behind that. But I still wanted her to have that belief. So we have, you know... Um, we have our elf on the shelf so i like to have fun with her with that so but the mom said when the little girl said this so apparently the little girl didn't believe in santa and the mom said bitch you got me fucked up and the little girl couldn't have been no more than seven you calling your baby a bitch in the middle of walmart bitch you got me fucked up that is the cycle then me and my daughter was in the mall. We was in Lakeside Mall in New Orleans. And the mom had this dress on that came up under her booty cheeks. And the, her daughter couldn't have been no more than 15. Dressed just like her mama. And you wonder what is wrong with our generation? Why, look, why our young girls are hookers or, or strippers or whatever the case may be? This is why. It is, I'm pointing the fingers. This is why. Man, we got to wake up. We got to see what we're doing wrong. We got to look in the mirror. I'm just trying to keep it real with us. Really, really trying to keep it real. And I just need you guys to understand. This is all out of love. This is something. We have queens that we're trying to raise. We have kings that we're trying to raise. But if we, we raising them to be thugs with their pants down. And we're raising them to be. Steve Harvey said. What's a Steve Harvey? No, no, no. I'm, I can't, Steve. I can't give you this credit. T.D. Jakes. He said, if you're not for sale, take the price tag off. Huh. That was price tag all over. She had probably three price tags on her. I don't know what the value was, but it wasn't much. Come on, you guys. We got to do better. I am so proud of my daughter. I'm so proud of my son. I still got one more to go. But this generation makes it so hard. I, w I had my daughter at a salon. The girl does a phenomenal job of braiding. But I can't take her there no more. I can't take her there no more because of the atmosphere. This is a freaking salon. And one of the girls in there, every 15 to 20 minutes, she was taking a blunt break. I understand they're legalizing it, but you bringing the smell back. And this is kids in there. Then you got this, these men hanging around in there, cussing and saying F and B and this and that and the other. You have talent in here. And you're going to lose out on your money and your business because you don't know how to be a professional. Because this is, I guess, the way you were raised. I don't know. But my baby can't come there no more. And I don't recommend nobody else going. And I haven't decided whether I'm going to disclose the salon yet. But she can't come there no more. So to wrap this up, I hope you guys send me some questions. 
I have some answers. I am willing to share my personal experience. It is nothing in my life that I have not been through that you haven't been through. I mean, you can literally ask me about anything and I can advise you on it. I had to learn the hard way. And I want you to not have to go through what I had to go through in order to get where I am. Like my daughter says, we're here for a good time, not a long time. So you want to live your best life. You don't want to live a hard life. Shelly Marie. I hope to hear from you soon.